the phrase garbage in garbage out has led to one of the biggest misconceptions in the AI field. In this video, I will show you how to avoid fooling yourself while cleaning your dataset. Hey guys, I'm Kevin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. So here I will talk about one of the worst practices I have seen in data science, and it's one of the most widespread practices, which is cleaning a data set. You will say, Kelvin, you are crazy, right? How is it possible that cleaning a data set is a bad practice? It is, okay? This comes from the fact that most people, when they hear garbage in, garbage out, they want to clean the data, so they assume they won't get garbage as an outcome. Let me just give you some context. AI models rely so the predictive performance of AI models rely on how good the input data is, okay? So if you have a very good data set, a very high quality data set, you will expect a high accuracy on the outcomes, okay? So your model will be very accurate. If you have a bad quality data set, then the accuracy will be bad, okay? It will be low. So people tend to think, well, I have a bad quality data set, I can just clean it and I will end up having a good outcome, a good predictive performance. And in theory, on the lab, they do, okay? Whenever they clean a data set, they end up with these magical numbers, very high predictive performance that doesn't translate into real life performance into the practice, okay? And if you're watching this video, I guess you're interested in building a data set for your machine learning model and you have a free preview for our course, building great data sets in the link below, okay? So people, whenever they hear garbage in, garbage out, they try to, the first step is let's clean our data set and then train a model and then let's just put it into production. And by cleaning the data set, I mean removing outliers, I mean, filling in the gaps, I mean, removing any missing values, all of these kind of techniques, right? So the issue here, you know, is if you clean the data set, how do you expect people to perform well on those bad data points that still exist in real life? Because they do exist. You clean them from your training set, but they are still there in your real life data set. So if, if you don't fix the problem on the source, your model won't know how to deal with those data points, okay? So it's like, for example, studying math from a book, from a textbook, and then assuming you will be able to deal with very complex uh, problems in real life when you are a civil engineer and you are doing constructions. It won't work, right? Because the problems that you use for training were very clean and very, very simple, and the problems you have on reality have a lot of noise, have a lot of issues around, and you need to prepare yourself for those kind of problems, not for the easy ones. The same thing happens with an AI model. If you like this video so far, remember to like and subscribe. So let me give you now three strategies to actually deal with this problem of bad quality data and still have reasonable or even good results, okay? So the first strategy is clean the data set as you are doing now, but in production be able to say no, okay? What do I mean by this? You will clean the data set in your training data set, the data that you use for training your model, and you will remember what are the cleaning steps that you use. So in production, whenever you see a data point that doesn't fit your clean strategy, your clean segment, the model will be able to say, no, I cannot handle that data point. And then the business will need to adjust to, to taking a no as an answer, to taking an abstention as an answer, okay? And this is like transformational because you are still having good performance on the points where you have good confidence, but you are capable of discarding the cases where you don't have enough confidence. So another person, another process can handle those cases. Okay, so the second strategy is don't clean your data, keep your data as noisy as it is, and let your model figure out how to deal with dirty data, with, with garbage data, okay? The performance you will see in during training in your lab will be lower than with the clean data set, but it will translate better to the real life performance, okay? So if you're capable of getting a reasonable performance on the garbage data, then go for it, avoid cleaning that data, okay? That's the second strategy that I have. And the third strategy, which I believe is the best one, you avoid bad data quality from the source. Okay, so instead of cleaning you get, you go to the source of the data, this is something that we teach on our course, and you will place the right constraint and limits on the data collection part that will avoid bad data from, from occurring, okay? So for example, if you know sometimes the, you have a camera and the camera vibrates because it's on a poor stand, then instead of removing those frames, change the stand, okay? Change the holder of the camera, or for example, if sometimes you have a camera and you know someone passes in front of the camera and occludes the frame, then you need to adjust the positioning. Or for example, let's say you have a form, a customer feedback form, the bad quality data comes because they fill in whatever they want. So change a free input text with some predefined responses, so a simple choice answer, so you know what kind of 
data you will get. So there are multiple ways you can clean the data at the root of the problem, at the source of the problem, instead of trying to remove those poor data quality at the end. And this is the best thing you can do whenever you are working on a real life machine learning problem, because you won't be delaying the problem up to the model, you will be cleaning it from the source and that will make your business better now, today, tomorrow and forever, okay? Remember, there is a free preview on the link below. Remember to like and subscribe. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.